On behalf of Starrow Group, we're here in Brickhouse, Kozo Ken Intro. These guys produce a range of different valves for the only gas market. Let's take a look. Tim, we're on your shop floor. It is an amazing experience seeing some of these big machines here. But essentially, what is the core of your business? Uh, we're a specialist control and choke valve manufacturer. Who we design and manufacture all valves on site and we specialise in engineered solutions for the oil and gas industry. Do you do any work outside of the oil and gas industry? Yes, we still um, do valves for the power industry and we do valves for any valves that we've manufactured in the past over our 50 year history, we will still do repeat valves and we also do spares for any valves that we've supplied in the past. Now some of the components and valves that you've got on the shop floor here, you, you've got to be taking some serious metal off. Is that why you invest in the Starrow Group's products? Yes, part of um, supplying into the oil and gas industry is that we have got to become more effective and more efficient. Um, everyone's looking at cost reduction and the key to us is being able to get more metal off um, qu in a quicker way and the Stadag machines enable us to do one hit machining, um, they've got milling, drilling, turning all in one machine centre so the key to us achieving our objectives. So the machine that we got behind us, the DST, is this a one-stop machine for you? In other words, one process? Yeah, a number of product it does that for. Um, some of the product is two it machining, but that is still an improvement on old traditional ways of machining. But our aim is to try and get all our product to be in one it machining. And is it driven by your customers? Yeah, price is key to that. We have got to become more competitive and reduce our costs. Lee, talking to Tim at Kozo Control, this Echo Force machine, this is pretty impressive machine for the type of valves they're doing. Why this machine though? Well, what we were looking for was a medium to large size machining centre and boring mill combined to reduce the number of setups, but also be capable of very heavy machining and very heavy boring of um, very tough steels and also inconel materials. Now, this is quite unique because you've got two beds here on this machine, haven't you? Often what you see in this industry is a single pallet machine and, and, and a horizontal quill. So a fairly traditional floor borer for doing this kind of work. What we've done is integrated a pallet system so that outside the machine you can be setting up the next job or loading the next sequence whilst the machine's running. So we want to keep the spindles turning all the time. And the spindle and the tooling on this, it's got some complex uh, angles there. How do you get around that? Well, this, this is quite unique because we build these machines from, from a modular design, so we have a number of different ways of constructing them. This has got a, an integral facing head you can see working in the background now. Very heavy duty product from Sharman, and it's fixed to the column. We can build it as a detachable head, an automatically loaded head, but then behind the head sits the spindle group. So you've got one and a half metre, or just short of one and a half metre stroke on this head, pot in the middle and a pot for the outside diameters, all 50 taper. And then you've got a 2,200 Newton metre torque spindle, a traversing spindle or quill as some people call it, that comes through the middle. So you can turn, you can mill, you can drill, you can produce the threads, overbore, backbore, all in one sequence with very few tools as well. And is it one up on this machine for them now? Where we can, we do a single setup. Often you'll use four, five, six different machining centres to produce these parts. So we'll load them to the machine, they'll run in sequence, the operator can walk away from the machine, everything's automatic, the tools are picked up automatically, the diameters are all set, measured, reset, recut automatically. Lee, thanks very much. Let's go and have a look at the second machine. So Lee, the Echo Force is obviously a big machine, holds up to 10 tonnes for their bigger valves. Now this Hecate DBF, why did you sell this machine to them? Well, well, well DBF stands for drilling, boring, turning, so it's a multifunctional machine. And Cozo came to us with a suite of components that we then worked with from our engineers to their engineers to develop a turnkey solution and integrated a, a very, very efficient process. So um, 
when the machine was installed, we, we just ran a, a series of jobs back to back through, through, the, through the shop. So turning and milling on, on the end products, uh, why do they need that? Because if you look at the shape of a component, normally these would go through four or five different sequences, different numbers of machines, different numbers of setups. We strap them to a fixture in one setup, machine the part completes, occasionally two setups. And you, you encounter a number of different features, so there are heavy milling, boxy shapes, there are, there are flanges that need to be turned, there are lots of internal features, different diameters with lead angles and, and undercuts. So we can do this all in one setup. There's a, there's a U-axis on, on the spindle uh, in the same way that the, uh, the facing head on the Echo Force works as well. And twin pallet I see again. Twin pallet because again we want to keep the spindles turning. Productivity is through cutting metal, not through having a machine stood idle while you're loading, loading different jobs. So Lee, based on um, Kozo Kent Introl's experience on the Echo Force and now the Heck at DBF, can you see extra expansion from then on the Sarek products? I think as volumes increase, then hopefully they'll need increased capacity and we'll have new opportunities. Lee, thanks very much. Thank you very much, Mark.